All right, guys, first thing we'll do is we'll open up TA portal here. It'll take a few seconds to come in. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project. So I'm just going to give this the name uh, generic PLC program for the Siemens trainer. Throw in my own name here. And we're going to hit create. So it's going to create the project. Excellent. So when you see this one, this uh, page right here, we're going to hit configure a device. And then when you're on this page, you'll go to add a new device. Now we're using the S7 1200. So we're going to scroll down to we see CPU and we know which one we're using, but we're actually going to choose unspecified CPU. And then you'll scroll down to the bottom and hit add. What's really cool when you choose the unspecified CPU is that uh, we're going to tone out and see what PLC is actually connected to our, our laptop. And it will actually grab all the information from the PLC that is connected up to it. So we have a, we have a PLC and we have an additional uh, analog input there. It's going to detect either one of those guys. So there we have the generic PLC. If we hit this detect here, then it will go out and tone out. So we're going to use the PNIE. And the PD interface, we're going to use the Ethernet connection, and we're going to start a search. So it's searching out for accessible nodes. It's found a PLC there. And there we go. So it, it came back with 192.168.0.1. I'm going to hit this one, the flash LED. And when you hit that, you should find that the LEDs on the front face of your PLC are flashing at you. So we're cool that that's the one that we need to, to talk to. So we're going to hit detect. And you'll see right here that it goes from a generic PLC to the exact PLC and analog uh, input output that we have beside it. Again, I'll just change my, not sure why it doesn't change the author all the way through, um, but that is the specific PLC that we have in front of us. If that menu is dropped down like that, I want you to grab it and bring it up. Uh, that's the only way you're actually going to be able to see the IP editor. So we'll go to Profinet interface. Again, not sure why it doesn't like when I change the author, it doesn't change it all the way through. But if you scroll down here on Profinet interface, there's that same IP, 192.168.0.1. I mean, that's the specific IP for my PLC. You will have a specific PLC uh, IP for your uh, each individual PLC in the lab. So we're, now we're going to go over to main OB1. It's over under program blocks. And what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, actually let's save the project first. So save as many times as you, as you can. And what we're going to do is we're bring, going to bring down an XIO and an output here. And I'm just going to label this guy uh, percent input zero. And I'm going to actually do it 0.0. .0. So that's going to be my uh, my normally open push button. And then my output is going to be percent Q 0.0. Now it didn't come up with a name. So I'm now going to go up and rename each of those tags. So this guy, I'm going to, to, going to call my start push button. So I've wired that to a, a normally open push button. And this guy right here, I'm just going to rename and I'm just going to call it output zero. looks like I lost, forgot to put the T in there. I'll have to throw that in there. Going a little bit too fast. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compile the project. See if there's any errors. And you can see just down here that I have zero errors and zero warnings. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download it to my PLC, which is right beside the compile button. Okay, so I'm going to select the PNIE for my PG. PC interface. I'm going to select Ethernet connection. I'm going to start the search one more time. Okay, it's found the IP 192.168.0.1. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load it into the PLC. So press the load and it will drop your program into the PLC there. Uh, just continue without synchronization. I just had a previous uh, program in there and this comes up then click down and hit stop all and again hit load. Excellent. Next thing, we're, last thing we're going to do is we're going to finish and it will start our program. 
but we can't see any green here. There's nothing where we can physically change the program. So we're going to turn this monitoring on and off. All right, so we're turning on the monitoring. You'll see that over on the left-hand side that everything's going green now. The left-hand side of our ladder diagram has gone green as well. And over here, um, you may have to like stop and run the, uh, the PLC there. It depends on some of the PLCs will go right into run mode. Others you have to hit run. So here you can see that I'm pressing the push button and that's green all the way through to my output. You should see that your output zero LED has turned on. And also when the input zero is pressed, then you're seeing that LED corresponding to that input zero turn on as well. Cool, eh? So now we've made a, a two wire control. We'll turn off the, the monitoring, we'll go off line. Hopefully everything was working out for you. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save one more time. And this is gonna be a generic PLC program. So I'm actually gonna delete these two guys out. Now those two names still stay in the, in the memory there. So actually I should go to the PLC tags and get rid of those guys. But now I've got a blank slate that I can pull up anytime that I need to, uh, to work on my PLC projects. Excellent. So those are all the steps that we need in order to get our PLC program, the TIA portal, to talk to our S7-1200s. Um, so everything's set up now. We've saved this as a generic PLC program for the Siemens trainer. Uh, what I want to do is you can also save it to your USB stick as well. Uh, I'll show you in the next uh, video how to find where these programs are saved on your computer so that if you forgot to save it to your, uh, your USB, then you can go into the file folder and just copy and paste it onto your USB. And then it doesn't matter which lab you're in or which computer station you're on, you have a generic program that you can then use for all of your new labs. So you're coming in to do a timer lab or a counter lab or anything. You're going to bring this guy up, right? Resave it under a different name that it's appropriate to whatever lab you're doing and then your way to the races. Everything's set up with the appropriate PLC, the analog uh, expansion card there, and you've already seen that it talks to it and everything's set up with the IP. All right, guys, hope everything uh, worked out for you. If you have any questions, then call your instructor over. Uh, the next video that we'll go through in this uh, sequence uh, videos is uh, finding where this PLC program was now saved on your computer so that you can grab it and copy it to your USB if you wish, or if you just wanna delete the entire um, program because you're done with it or enough that something was not working or something you can find it and just delete it off of your hard drive. All right guys, we'll see you on the next video.